So the roadmap. So 3.2 Legacy Light Marine Armour. We're looking at getting that. Legacy Medium Marine. Legacy Heavy Marine. Is they're the original like the armors we got now, aren't they untamed? They're just doing a rework on them. Not so sure about that. I haven't been paying attention to the armors. Mostly the core game development and stuff. But I gave you a lot another link to the spreadsheet that can actually track the project progress per week. Yes. Here we go. Open this. So we know you So if it doesn't make any progress in the say four weeks and like okay, maybe not this time. Yeah. Focus on definite three point two. Is that three point three? Yeah, there's three point three in there as well. I mean we're already on three point two point No, we're on three point one. Three what? Three point one is what we're on. Oh, I keep getting confused. I keep thinking um it's like three point zero is the yeah. Yeah, three point one was what we're on now. So three point two will come out in quarter two, so June, July this year. Probably end of June, start of July. Should get caught the three point two. So yeah, with all the all the armors in here, they look they look like the um original armors that we have. I don't know if I can make these bigger or not. Not really. I hate that you click on a link to make it bigger and it's like the same size. Mm -hmm. They look like the original I mean, like armors we got now, it just looks like they've done a bit of rework to them. You can uh, right click it and go to open original image on a new tab or something like that if you're using Google Chrome. And make it a bigger version. Uh, I just noticed, like, oh, they're moving a lot of the gameplay elements to 3.3 because I was thinking, oh, that's going to be the next one. And, oh. Uh, link a new tab, not. Nah, I didn't so, So, and we'll also be looking at uh, Port Olisar Collection. What's this all about? <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, various clothing sets that would be used for inhabitation and stores at Port Olisar. Okay. Gameplay. So, they're going to enter the improvements to Quantum Travel. So improve the overall quantum travel experience group with system. upgrades to graphics, audio, and f functionality. Is the group six system? Oh, yeah, it's in there too. Yep, the ability to team up with your friends and corp, corp uh, cooperate on jobs and missions and integrate group chat features. So hopefully then, if that's yes. if, we, if we group up and we go do a job, we should get paid evenly, like split the split the uh, amount of money up between the two of us. Yeah, I feel like it's going to be needing more uh, job types or further away locations, something to make it more worthwhile, but that will be awesome. Yeah. Um, the quantum travel stuff, I don't know if that's this pa in 3.2 or if they talk about it later on. I know they were talking about with the quantum travel, they wanted to make it so uh, we can group. Quantum link. Group, yeah, quantum link. So we can uh, quantum link our ships together and jump at the same time and end up in the same place. So, G'day, Power of Naya. Quantum Welcome linking. back. Yeah. Good it's, to see uh, you back, mate. Yeah, for quantum, quantum linking. linking is zero out of seven right now. Zero out of seven. Is, what zero. patches are they looking at that? Is it 3.3? Was it play? It's 3.2. Oh, is it? 3.2, maybe it's down further. I haven't got to it yet. In gameplay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, obviously now quantum linking. I've got down to it now. So, mining will be a thing in 3.2. Uh, um, I did hear them, I think it might have been on around the verse, was it? They were talking about um, the scav uh, sc uh, salvage function. If if they can get enough to it completed, they will implement it in three point two as well. I did hear that somewhere. I don't know where I heard that. Was it on around the verse or something? I can't remember now. Uh, yeah, they said that if they can get enough of it, like completed, like feature complete, before three point two comes out, they were going to throw it in with mining. So that's going to be pretty cool out of yeah. the morning. Um, 
I'm gonna might have to pick up my prospector again, get rid of my Vulcan for time being, and have me prospector so I can try that out. Oh uh, yeah, there's Quantum Lincoln. 2.0 ship systems and weapon power allocation. That's 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 going to be a big thing. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming they're going to be adding a lot of doors and a lot of windows to a lot of the ships. It's like, we going to maybe no, I wouldn't say repair, but maybe just fix it, uh, or yeah. it could just be you know, allocation of power like yeah. on the consoles. Yeah, well, you're going to be really able, sure that one. You, you're going to be able to go to Dumpers Depot and stuff like that too. Buy your components, come in, replace them, which you can do now. But it's actually going to mean something. Is what I mean. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't think you really get that much of an effect from it. But once once that comes in, you should be able to see the different effects from it. Uh, what's the item co yeah. uh, kiosk shopping? What's this about? Implement of shopping kiosks, which increase variety of available products. Are we able to? Um, buy our items on like through the screen i'm assuming like they're going to be doing things like right now we just have raw elements and it's around i think 30 or two different <coughs> types of things i'm not yeah. sure about if it's that many uh they could be adding things like um you know things joined together like two metals or it could be that you mine some material from uh, planet b and then you sell it and that could okay. be other thing and there's also probably fuel density when they add fuel things so like yeah, got high grade fuel. Well, we'll take it for a high amount of money. You have yeah, low grade fuel. Yeah, it's on, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, okay. I was hoping it'd be something like now, like when you go into, like you go into Olisa for, for example, you go into uh, guaranteed events or whatever it's called, and you go to buy some armor or a flight suit. If you want to purchase the armor, you got to click on each individual piece. And that I wish you could just sort of like select multiple pieces and then go to the checkout instead of having to go buy this piece, buy that piece, buy that piece. If you know what I, I mean, mean. that could possibly Which... make it be like it works. It, it just doesn't sound like it's going to be like a giant feature they want to broadcast because it could be something so minor. It's like, like you yeah. know, cipher light, cipher light. Uh, you yeah. know. But like all I could thing. do is bring up a little screen basically that you can go to and select a different different bits and pieces and add it to your cart so you don't have to keep you know okay i want this helmet i want them leggings and i want the chest plate and then that's it you don't have to keep selecting them by you know go through the process for each one of them you can select them and then go to your mobile glass and pay for them is is what i mean which would be a good thing yeah, and, and I... like and like for the mo like you go to the mo and you go to buy a clip like say you want to buy three or four clips for your smg you currently got to click on it, you know, go up, brings up your mobile class, purchase, exit, click on it again, bring up the mobile glass, purchase, exit. There should be just a little tab there. So when you bring it up, you can just click on it and like, like just a little arrow left and right. So you can yeah. add the number like one clip, two clips, three clips, and just increases your price, bang, buy three clips instead of having to do it three times. Yeah. Like they may be adding that feature. I just feel like it's going to be, um, one of those things that's just maybe gameplay, not me. Uh, um, it's like a, it's like a, I don't know how to explain it. Such a yeah. minor feature, that how to explain it doesn't seem like it's going to be something they, they are announcing. It could just be any time they do it. Yeah. Well, there is um, PMA and VMA improvements there as well. So that's improvements to the visual presentation functionality of and usability of the Moby Glass apps. So. It might have a little then bit that in that. Then that would probably be it. Yeah, it might have a little bit in yeah, that. It would, so. it would, yeah, it would most likely be featured under that thing because that's what, yeah, that's what yeah. the interface is. G'day, electrical, uh, electrical on longboard, sorry. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, well, yeah, AI entries, so. What have we got in here? FPS combat AI. And yeah, yeah. And improve ai flight behaviors in action that's that's a that's a must ships and vehicles for 3.2 so we're gonna have the rework of the mustang beta rework of the mustang delta gamma introduction of the 600i the hurricane the eclipse and also the rework of the mustang alpha and the avenger which is pretty cool and along with an introduction of the Vandal Blade, which I'm pretty excited to see that one as well. What what was that going for when they sold that? About 180? 200? Vandal Blade? Uh, the Vandal Blade? It was actually quite cheap compared to out. the Glaive. Compared to the Glaive and all that, like the Glaive went 350. I think the Scythe was 
when it initially was in the first concept. I think it was around the 400 mark. Yeah, the ship's gone very, like, they've gone cheap, and then they've gone a more expensive as more versatility and more ability came to it. Like, yeah. the very first ship, the, um, they were very basic. And then you look at them now, like, before and after. Before and after. <clears throat> yeah. It has features. But but the blade, I also, think... Also, the, the blade wheels was don't actually, look blocky. Yeah. Well, the blade, I think, was reasonably cheap when they brought it down the concept. I have a feeling it was about 180 not too sure. I got a, It's actually part of the referral program too. If you get a hundred referral points, they give you one of them, which I'm hoping to get towards. Slowly getting my referral points up. Money seventeen or eighteen away from getting the must are uh, the the uh, razor, the miss razor at the moment. Yeah, fifty-seven of seventy-five to get me miss razor. Yeah, it may have been cheaper a while back, but the thing on this website certainly says it's like that amount of money. Uh, for the blade, two fifty. For the scythe, three hundred. Two fifty was the blade. So it could have been. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and the glaive. That's the one I think. Uh, I think it was cheaper at one point. Yeah. So weapons and items. That's something actually we haven't really heard a lot on is in the weapons is the shield, the personal shields. I thought that might have been something they might have implemented pretty soon considering we got Star Marine now. Um, yeah, it does seem a bit more that. complicated because, yeah. I mean, yeah. I haven't actually heard anything about the personal shield. Hey, have you seen it? You know, what, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? The little one they deploy on the ground and... Comes oh, out of that was... Um, yeah, are you talking about the uh, first part of the other studio when they're making the FPS module? When that, yeah, when they very first were doing all the FPS stuff, they showed that little one that it, the the player comes along and he deploys it on the ground. And it puts a like a hologrammy sort of shield straight up in front of you that you can stand behind. Yeah, uh, I keep in mind when that thing came out, there was a presentation by another studio saying this is what we're making and this is. Uh, but the issue is it didn't go up to spec. The Star Citizen's model and what they needed. And yeah. it wasn't compatible, so they ended up chucking the entire thing and making everything in the house. Yeah, right. So that was probably with it as well. So it depends if they're still going through with that. I'm, I'm uh, really keen to get my hands on the, I'm going to butcher the name, the Castac um, uh, Scapel, is it? Castac uh, Scatter Gun? Uh, not the Scatter Gun. It's the sniper rifle. Gas stack arms, uh, s scalpel or something. I think it is. Can't say that word. It's the sniper rifle that they're doing. Oh uh, yeah. And created uh, this rifle by characters in the game. This not only includes asset creation but also um, animations, as well as design inputs and weapon balance. Okay. Yeah, but it, it looks quite nice, that sniper rifle. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of the, uh, like, uh, single-fire bolt-action sniper rifles. Yeah. In most games, because I don't like M7G, because the uh, radical changes way too much. I like the one-shot kill, or one-shot very far away thing. Yeah, yep. So it's 3.2. Sorry? You right? Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? Did you say something? Oh, I was starting to say, I was moving on to 3.2, but I thought you were about to say something. About 3.2. Oh, I, I pressed page so. back. Yeah, I, I pressed page back, page back and to go to another web page. It's like, I think you heard me doing that. Oh. It's my push to talk button. Uh -huh. <coughs> so 3.3. Uh, we have the, the True Defense Pro Armor. That actually looks quite nice. If I could, wish I can get a larger picture of this, but I can't. I can't seem to get any bigger. Open, save, copy, link address. No, I can't seem to get the picture yeah. any bigger. I'd like to zoom in on that. Um, Hurston clothing collection. So a whole new clothing collection, and Odyssey flight suit rework. Right, eh? 
location. So we're going to bring in 3.3. We should have Hurston. Yeah. Which is going to be Matt Hurston's, what they showed in the Citizen Con, is it? That big planet um, that, or is, is that the one, is that what I'm thinking right? I thought that was 3.4 for some I, reason. I, no, yeah, I'm not Arkham, sure that if was Hurston Arkham, is, it? yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, I'm not sure if, uh, Hurston, yeah, Hurston's the city. I don't yeah. know if Hurston, if Hurston on Arkham. Or it could be Hurston from the demo from a long time ago, you know, when they showed the um, crash ship and the landing with the constellation. Yep, yep. And they showed the ground fields and all that. I think that would be that fine. I'll do a quick search. Right. I thought it might have been what they did in Citizen Con where, he, where they took off and they showed that large city, but I have a feeling that was um, Arcorp, actually. Which uh, is on Arcorp and Hurston. Yeah. Oh, no. Because Hurston, like... I think, is the uh, binary planet. Okay. It's just, the only reason I no, thought wait, that is because that. it's got Lawville landing zone there, which they showed in that same demo. And they've also got the rest stop, which they showed in that same demo. So that's why I thought it might have been that planet. So it's 35 out of 47% um, percent complete. So, well, not percent complete, but 45 tasks out of 47 complete. So it's getting along there. The Lawville landing zone. The Hearst yeah. and Moon. I mean, and the rest stop. I want that rest stop on just in fact that the module and like, <laughs> something other than the impulse. So. Yeah. If you find that video that I was just talking about, send us a little link there. I'll put it up here. So, um, uh, Power and Air and the uh, electrical on board can see it. And slow cool. There you go. All right. Like it took me three seconds because I was watching the video. <laughs> so I won't watch this whole video. I'll jump in a little bit so they can sort of see the scale of things to come. Yeah, R Corp. So that's R Corp to Hurston. Okay. So, and, if, if you haven't yeah. seen this video, everywhere you see in this map, you're basically going to be able to land. <coughs> That's not to say you're going to be able to explore every single building though, but a lot of the buildings you will be able to explore. But not every single one, because it would take a long time for them to map out every single individual building for you to be able to explore. So, which seems like a lot of time wasted on, on stuff where get us a game out and then if they got time later on they could probably do things like that expand it so yeah like the way they look at it is like uh you most likely be able to land on one of these little you know towers or buildings but you might basically going to be like you know playing uh dangerous early loose if you like walk on the surface in case your ship falls off or something like that yeah it would be a very fun game of how many ships you could balance on one of these oh yeah Skip up a little bit further. Uh, heads up, um, it hurts. No, Arcorp City is supposed to be 3.4. Yeah, so right. it's the next three months after the yeah. So, end of the year, December. Yeah. Um, do I go too far? Oh, you know, it's a bit sharp. Skip up a little bit further. So, yeah, you can see the scale and size of that city there. So you will be able to explore yeah. pretty well every little bit of it. You just won't be able to explore inside of every single building. They've got to have, they gotta have they, yeah, that's right. They've got to have some sort of limits. They do talk about that in this video too, I think. Oh, I don't know if it's actually in this video, but when they did the Gamescom thing, um, they spoke about the... Um, they mostly... Yeah, they, they talk about like truck stops and how they generate and how they like uh, each one's sort of unique, but essentially how they go through the process. They yeah. generate it, see how it goes, they find the bots in it, they try working on the code, make it more improved, and they keep doing that over and over and over and over again until they have a really good iteration going. Yeah. And then when they finally got the finished version with one that they're going to be winning the game, they're going to be doing the generation, go uh, go through the entire thing, do a little bit of touch-ups here and there, put it into the game, and that should save them 
tens of thousands of hours yep. to make each one unique like themselves. So just seeing also, the, it, the truck stop here. Yeah. Sorry. What was that? Oh, no, I interrupted. Uh, it also saves a huge amount of uh, data on gigs because that way you don't have to have new assets for every uh, truck stop. It does reuse them, but the yep. way they're reusing them is very smart. They're going to have different damage states and all that. It looks very well done. Yeah. I'm just um, watching the the truck stop now. He's just landed at the truck stop. How disorientating does it look? The one he's landed on that pad and it looks down at Hurston because the truck stops on the angle compared to the planet. It looks like it's like you're going to fall off for it. But you're not because you're in space. Yeah. Like my issue is like, am I going to land my ship upside down by mistake? Yeah. <laughs> Looking at that truck stop, it does look like it's pretty defined, and you know which way is going to be up and which way is going to be down. The yeah. issue with like um like arc corp, not arc corp, uh, polar and all that is that you don't know which way is up and down when you're going in until you're very close. Yeah, where this place because all the sign and that's that's like uh, uh, um, Olasar hasn't got it at the moment either, and it will have in the future. I guarantee it is the big LED signs that you see on top of the buildings here. You know, like Olasa will probably have them on them eventually, you know, uh, Gary to Defence, uh, Dumpers Depot and things like that on it. So that way when you fly, you do come in, you'll see them signs and you go, well, that's, that's the top of the station. Sierra Hotel, I'm guessing I'm going to have many of drunken nights staying there. Though, I do wonder if there's going to be a wise old man staying at one station at every given time and that'll be a player. Yeah. And this last Oh, another one's like, old count. If I go back a little bit. There we go. Though I think this is the landing zone they were talking about in the other... Ah, uh, where was it? Lawville landing zone was the last bit that's shown in this video. Oh, so Louisville is like a city. Yeah, well, it's this like it's like an industrial. If you go to the end, towards the end of the yeah. video, they're about sixteen minutes, fifteen minutes. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what got me confused. I thought uh, Hurston was a planet, and then Louisville was a planet. So like, okay, and then, that's why I was like, which one's which? So but the one in the same is this, it has a city on it. So Arcorp is on it's another planet itself. So I'm not too sure what planet that is. So and obviously they fly out to Hurston, where Law where Lawville is located. Actually, Arcorp does seem like it'd be its own planet and city. So oh, I'm is assuming it? Okay. Because it's a giant city. Okay. Yeah, I'm assuming because it was like the planet itself is one giant city. Yes. Counts as like a planet. Well, Hurston, it looks like it's just like an outpost. There's a small town or city in there or a refinery. That yeah. Is like a well, it's got the Lawville landing Lawville. zone there. Yeah. So I'm guessing they're going to have that rest stop probably on the outskirts of um, Hurston, I'd say. So gameplay features. Um, we should have our repair bots. I'm very excited for that. Mission and mission modularity. Uh, mod Modularity and racing, that should be pretty cool too. It's got no status at the moment. Yeah, because they only have first pass missions where uh, you get one mission and you do it. But I think the modular system is where you do one mission and in doing that one mission, you unlock other missions or there could be other clues to missions. Like <laughs> pick up a uh, data pad from salvaging a giant wreck, you could get another like uh, treasure map from that or something. Yeah. This is one part I don't understand because unless further down, if I haven't, oh okay, it is there. Oh no, that's a beacon. Is there? Let me go to the ships quickly. Cyclone. No, well it's not in there. Let me I'll get back out of there. Yeah. It, it I'd... says in here like okay, you've got the repair bot. Uh, repair ships. So obviously they're bringing in the features for gameplay, repair ships, repair bots. Um, I think they may be more Orion referring to either the salvaging mechanic repair bots where they you know, pick things up and deliver them for the uh, reclaimer or they could just be the repair station and they, the repair bots come out and scan and repair. It could be either of well, those things. 
I, I would assume it's the ones on chips because then later on you've got to service beacon for repairs. Uh, pay other players to find you and repair your ship. So it's yeah, a little bit further down. Like... But, but there's no ships released that repair like the Crucible or the Vulcan. Then They're not being released in that patch. I mean, technically you're just repairing it with lasers. So guns on the ships have lasers on them. So I'm assuming you just need to really precisely shoot those lasers to repair things. <laughs> Precision um, arc welding. Get a beam laser. Welcome to the chat, Untamed. Hi, me. Uh, refueling, refuel beacons as well. Scanning. So um, I think when they were talking about the scanning, it was more the... Uh, what's it say there? Scanning identity debris and could be salvaged. Okay. There was talk of um, long-range scanning. So when you come into a system, yeah. you can either do more long-range stuff, whether it's more beam-focused. So you might not be able to scan from... When you first come in, you know, full 360 degrees out, it might be more of a a beam long range scan. Then yeah. you can uh, scan that direction. The, yeah. uh, one of the issues was a quadrant, the Squadron 42 demo is they didn't have the scanning feature, and the scanning feature was tied to the um, where to go. Like you have to go here, here, and here, and that's yep. just for like landmarks. Like, yeah. Good, which way is safe? So it could have a lot of other functions too as well. Yep. So uh, the salvage, salvage and extraction is going to be in. Um, processing and breaking down debris, the components and parts, which is that's that's going to be a big thing too. Like you're not just going to grab a hold of ship and rip it into a reclaimer, and just tear it to shreds and sell the sell it scrap. You're going to be able to go down, you know, cut things off like guns, like unbolt weapons and um, other components from inside. Basically, strip. If you've if you got like a cutlass or something there, it's just been disabled, basically. You're going to be able to salvage every little bit of it and sell that stuff as a whole and then scrap the rest of the ship yeah. for the metal. Like, a, you know, I think for a lot of other like, per, uh, people in the do reclaiming, if they don't have a reclaimer to actually break down the ship, is like they find the most valuable things, the engines, the guns, anything of yeah. value, and then they strip it away from it, and then That's they sell right. the data of... There's an empty ship out here, you can get all the metal if you ever reclaim it. Yeah. And I think, like, the way the other ships are going to be doing it, so having, like, actual repair arm robots to turn the stuff off, there's the handy-dandy repair tool. Yep. There's a laser on it. Uh, the ability to for players to go outside of the physical, and uh, outside and physically repair their ships. So we should have our, what was it, the multi-tool? Multi-tool? Yeah, I think it was a multi-tool. Yeah, I haven't haven't heard anything about that for quite a while, but yeah, the multi tool. So I'm guessing that's going to be Swiss Army right. laser. Yeah, the Swiss Army laser. Yeah, the buy and selling of fuel fuel transfers. Uh, the major gameplay is for three point three. Let's close a few of these windows, make it a bit easier. AI uh, weapon use for FPS combat and ship behavior. So continued work, basically what you're seeing in three point one and three point two for the AI um, ships and vehicles we're going to see the rest of the cyclone range the tumbrel cyclone so the TR which is the man, oh, the manned gun on the back I don't know I can't remember exactly what TR stood for but it's got a um, basically a, a gun bolted on the back that you can go stand on on a platform the racer uh, the AI uh, the AA so your anti-air Missile, Cyclone. What was the NR? That was variants of Cyclones into the game. What's the NR? Do you remember? Oh, sorry, the RN uh, Cyclone? I think there's racing, there's anti-air, and we have the default one with the cargo in the back, and there's missile one. No, that's the anti-air. Yeah, well, there's five of them. We've got the one we got now, and then there's four. Oh, the one that has a turret in the back of it, anti-person. Okay, because, yeah... There's, like anti-land. Yeah, well, there's one, like, on the map here, it's got the first one's got, like, a little... Like, a mounted gun on the back. Then it's got the racer. Stealth? Maybe it's a stealth. Maybe it's a recon or something. Then you got the AA, and, uh, then, yeah. and then there's the RN, 
which maybe it's I did there was it one with like scanning abilities that also like the tracker mm. i'm not too sure i think it may just be more of a stealth one it makes a lot of sense if you have a scan then that's more of the uh, rover's job yeah and the phoenix and the hammerhead so the hammerhead should be in by september which i'm going to be very interested to see that sherbs has got his i've got my ccu for it but i'm tossing up whether to keep me a carrick or upgrade to that so sherbs will have his i'll be able to go out with him check it out anyway and i'll still just hang off until the carrick's in game before i make any decisions so because once i go to that i can't go back so i'll have yeah. to wait for the carrick I mean, to come in and check it out then i could have to decide then from there whether i'm going to upgrade to the carrot oh the heavy head will keep the carrot i think i'm going to keep the carrot but yeah more versatility yeah i think so because start off i'm going to be doing a lot of exploring and i just think yeah like i think it's going to suit me a lot more to start off in the game and then later on when i make a bit of money i can pick myself up a hammer head so we're going to have other big ships me, anyway yeah. so I, I feel like there may be a difficulty on the military based ones because it may be like you have to prove yourself to get it and for a pirate to get those military ships you have to steal it yep and then they have the bin number which i hope is a really good system it works well so it's like not that everyone has a lot of money that's really from trading you get yeah. a giant military class weapon uh, shield although yep. they do a lot of military based uh, missions so we've got the sucker punch uh revision and the karma the arms karma uh looks like you said the sucker punch off. gun thing i kind hey. of think it was a boxing glove attached to a gun <laughs> yeah the sucker punch yeah um cortex so we have environment environment blending shaders uh network and uh entity streaming i have no idea what any of this stuff is object container streaming uh foip foip is that the voip thing is it adding face yeah face over ip voice over ip to game so that's 3.3 that's not too far away either i've got a webcam i've just got to get it all set up cloud tech are uh, the creation of the elements of space that contains uh unrefined fuel elements okay and more performance optimization so over to 3.4 so more character staff playable female character there we go i didn't know that one was coming out at the end of the year be a lot of people excited for that one there's ship jacker armor have you seen that ship jacker that's the uh <laughs> looks like scary a scary one yeah it looks like a bull's head or something that's pretty cool so a few more locations, Arcot planets, like um, Untamed said before, Area 18 landing zone. I noticed actually, I didn't realise until yesterday or the day before, that Area 18 is actually gone from the from the game at the moment. Well, there's no way that I can see that you get there anyway. Oh, you kind of still can get to it. You know the like, offline mode where you go into the city by loading in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that. You gotta type in command. I've seen some people do it, but that was like for 3.0. Yeah, so it's right. a while ago, so they could have fixed it. So an Arcorp moon. Moons. So how many moons does Arcorp have, I wonder? Uh, the creation implant of Arcorps. Two moons. There we go. Lyria and, Wa Lyria and Walla. They also include concentration outposts and populations the planet's surface. Populating the planet's surface. Okay. Uh, gameplay aspects for 3.4 so uh, interdiction and salvage so it'll be more work on the salvage stuff but uh, players are going to be able to interdict other players and AI um, land claims purchasing that's interesting so yeah are we going to have our um, building in by then by the end of the year I did it may be just be, um, I claim this uh, part of the planet and I'm mining here. Yeah, it could be right. that only. It's just like, very experimental. Yeah. I don't necessarily, I kind of feel like the loan claim came way too early announcing and it could have been. Because yeah. <coughs> it really didn't make much sense with the Pioneer launch and it kind of made the game look 
do money grabby. Yeah, Make so we got you're able to purchase and register claims. Uh, land claim legal gameplay. What's the system responsible for determining how players can protect their lands, whether they're authorized uh, or etc. Land create uh, create emissions. The ability to create missions, paying someone to patrol or mine. Uh, connecting to your land claims so so if you can actually people can actually pay you to come mine on your claim that's that's interesting hmm. find a good place to mine a oh, good place to set up shop and you know with your scanning vehicle and then you have a mining ship sell it hmm. yeah though so kind of way there's another category for beacons otherwise it's gonna be very uh flooded yeah like the big feature right now, I'm thinking 3.4, the biggest one is single universe. So then the 50, uh, 50 player max, it's going to be everyone in the same server. Yep. yep. So AI improvements again, back to the same before combat and stealth for FPS. Um, they're going to be working on the quantum and strafing for AI. So I'm guessing, say, like at the moment, you sort of see the AI spawn in your location. You take off and quantum away, and that's that's the end of it. I'm thinking, if by that, I take it out of that, that they're going to be able to quantum and chase you down. Is that what you take from that? Yeah. If they're working on quantum for AI? Maybe. Like, right now, as um, you get interdicted, you just move a little bit to the right or left, and then... Hey, you can uh, quantum drive again. Yeah. Even then we're not meant to do that. <clears throat> well, I notice at the moment they've got the jammer now. You've got to fly a fair bit away from them to get outside the jamming radius. Yeah. But it, I it, mean, might, it might be too, not so much so a pirate can quantum travel after you. It might be more so we can start to see this living, breathing universe come to life by having AI ships out there actually jumping and coming into sectors and stuff. So you might be flying around yellow. And all suddenly, whoop, the ship jumps out in front of you. And it, it could be a friendly just cruising off, doing its thing. Going down, landing on the planet or whatever. That, that might be what it's all about too, which would be pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, isn't that uh, coming out in Core Tech 3.2? Like, the uh, AI is getting more features? Or... Uh, network, oh, line cutting, this. and performance balance in 3.2. Since all's got their core tech AI, uh, just more AI improved fight and behavior of actions in combat stealth. <coughs> Pardon me, over this cough. Um, ships and vehicles. So, we got the miss. Uh, so, basically, we're gonna have the whole Reliant range come out the Mako, the Sen, the Tana. And then we're going to move into the the Miss Freelancers. We're going to get the Dur, the Miss. So still no Max. I thought the Max might have come out. The Miss is going. And that's going to change the uh, whole of the ship, so it may be pushed back. Yeah, the Miss is going to be interesting to see, and I'll be very interested to see that Dur. The Dur I was one of my old loves. I fell in love with that ship, and I felt and I had a thing for all the Miss ships, and I've sort of lost that love, and I've moved away to Anvilling and uh, well I wouldn't say all Drake ships but I love the Cuddy I really love the Cuddy it's a very versatile ship going to have a lot of uses for it and I love the or, or, the Origin ships like the 300 series and the 890 yeah have you seen the concept like I don't know if it's official or not but it does look nice the issue is I kind of feel like it lo uh, loses its uh, appeal the way I like it yeah uh, implement the a revised model of the Freelancer Max in the game. So the Freelancer Max is there as well. And the Taurus it was just down a bit further under the Hawk. So I've got a Hawk. That'd be interesting to see that too. They'd need to bring in Bounty Hunting. See, so yeah, that's that's something I think they need to have as well. Um, like, in, I don't, have you played... You haven't played any Elite Dangerous, have you, Untamed? Uh, only... Let's say uh, a bit of it. Okay. Um, in in Elite, I can't remember if you didn't have the warrant scanner. I think you still did paid bounties, but they weren't as much. 
But once you got the warrant scanner, yeah, no, you do still get paid bounty. So you've got a warrant scanner on you. You can go and purchase a warrant scanner, fit to your ship, and you can fly it to um, areas like it can be, you can come across anyone, anywhere basically in the universe that has a wanted level on. But there was these bouts, uh, what were they? Uh, resource sites, I think they were, in Elite. And you go to these resource extraction sites, and there'll be, you know, you'll have a big fleet of federal ships that are in there patrolling the area. But then you'd have guys that come in in wings and they'd go in and they'd pick on the guys that were mining asteroids or just moving through the area. And they'd be AI. They could be AI or they could be other players. And if they had a bounty on their head, you'd fly around. See, they have a system in place. If you fire upon a ship before scanning it, not for a, not for a bounty or anything, but if you don't scan the ship first, you instantly get a bounty on your head for firing at them. If you scan the ship and then fire, uh, if they're wanted and fire at them, you don't get a bounty. But if they're unwanted, you scan them and you fire at them and they're not wanted, you will get a bounty on your head then. But if they've, if you scan them and they're wanted, then you don't get a bounty. Um, basically, if you shoot that ship down, you shoot that ship down, once you've scanned it, you'll get a small percentage of a bounty. It will go to your system on your computer. If you die, you lose that. But... The idea is once you collect so many, you go back to the nearest port and cash in on it, as, as, like as much as you can. Um, once you put a warrant scanner on your ship, once you finish scanning the ship in front of you, to find out if they're good or bad, you work out, yep, they've got a bounty on them, then you hit them with the warrant scanner, and it'll actually scan, scan them again, and when you shoot them, you'll get a bigger payout, basically. So you might go from... You know, ten thousand dollars for blowing up that bloke and that ship up to eighty thousand dollars, or some of them, you know, hundred, hundred to two hundred thousand dollars, depending on how big of a bounty they had on their head, just by scanning them with a warrant oh, yeah. detector. And then, and then, what all you do is then, as soon as you fly back to the nearest port to go back get fuel, repairs, upgrades, or whatever, when you're there, you go through your little um, log, pick out all your bounties, bang, you get your cash payout. And that's what I think they need to implement in Star Citizen, something like that. Um, so when you're out flying around yeah. now and you get interdicted by a pirate, you know, scan them, yep, it's a pirate, they're wanted, shoot them down, you know, you get a couple hundred UEC for it, for cleaning up the area. What I really, really hope it scales, um, let's say, right now, this is like a single entity or let's say two or three people most. Yep. Well, let's say you have a organization that is very notorious, they're a pirate group crew and they have a captain. Or at least the guild leader, and mm. he gets to accumulate all the uh, lower crimes of the guild. Yep. So essentially, it builds up over time. He has interest, they have a pirate crew, and then it's like the only way you're going to take that guy down mm. is not by like the behave missions, but you know, a Idris or something, uh, someone that has one of those, or a Polaris. Yeah, yeah. So it gives the military guys a popular theory ships a job. Yeah. I do hope it scales to that. So if you're watching the stream and you're, you're liking it so far, please hit that follow button. It does help me out a lot. I'm trying to get more, get on my way to 100 followers. It's going to be a long road, but we'll get there eventually one day. Um, for some reason, my page closed. What were we on? 3.4, weren't we? Or 3.3? Yeah, I think we'll move on to 3.5. <coughs> Yeah, I haven't done the core tech in 3.4, so characters, we looked at them, locations, yep. Game, I think we're looking at the ships, weren't we? Yeah, the ships. Yeah, we just finished the ships in 3.4. So, weapons and weapons and uh, items, we've got the Castac Cas Arms uh, Revenger, the 212 twin. That looks quite nice. I do like that, that looks sexy. I'm guessing it's a ballistic shotgun, is it? Uh, design. Dual barrel shotgun for use of characters in game. Includes asset creation passes, numerous designs and design inputs into weapon balance. Um, I'm guessing I'm guessing I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's a ballistic. Might not be, but mm. uh bearing saw buck repair uh revision. There I feel like are. it may it looks like a shotgun with his uh, handle. Yep. Oh, wait. Uh, the stream is pretty old. Uh, attended. Uh, you meant this pistol? Yeah, yeah. The, the pistol now. The Barian Sawbuck 
repeat of revision. I don't know what that's all going to be about, but very early pictures of it by the looks. Uh, the Gemini S71. <coughs> Guess it's going to be an assault rifle. Yep, assault rifle. Tactical GT870 Tarantula Revision. Okay, I think I own this. This here, even though it shows a picture of a handgun, I'm thinking this is actually for your ship. Converts all the tasks associated with updating Gallison's tactical system. GT870 Tarantula series of ballistic cannons and implemented the revised versions in game. So, <clears throat> that is, um, that I'm pretty sure that is, I'm just going back over to my hangar, as part of the 52, th uh, f what was it, 52,000 mark it might have been, um, where am I going to go, hangar, we got given a couple of items, yeah, Oh, I see you reckon that, man. And how much you have. Yeah. 52 million. We got the man maneuvering. Uh, the peacemaker. Uh, where is it? Maybe it's down further. No? Control F. Control F. Oh, I ought to bring it up. Now, it should be just here. But it's not. Okay. Okay. Control F it is. So what was he again? The control F is control find. It's like uh, GT... finding things. Uh, what was it called again? GT eight seventy is the tri the tactical tarantulas. That's it. Uh, GT eight seventy. Okay. And then where you got to go find them, do you? So it's maybe. See, this is where it should be. I've got the... Oh, okay. No, no, no. This is what I was thinking of here. Sorry. The Peacemaker. Peacemaker Gatlins. That's what I'm thinking of. We've got the, for the 55 million mark. Okay. I thought it was the Tarantulas is what we got given. Okay. I thought they were finally implementing them in game, but no. We're still waiting for them to come. And then for 3.4 Cortec... Uh, reduced city rendering performance, um, which we saw last night when we were that little bit far out from Levski and we had the big red, uh, the big black square over it. Improving space yeah. scenery. Improving space scenery, really? I thought it looked pretty damn good now. I'm assuming that comes like asteroids, maybe the dust around the uh, belts and stuff like that. Yeah, or it can like... be a flash of planet. That's what it's looking like, yeah. Using some elements of our gas cloud tech to improve the quality of our asteroid fields and space scenery to create a more uh, listerine space environment. Uh, the parallel network job, increased network, multi-threading, multi lobby refactors, uh, management ready for service, muscles meshing, okay. Uh, server meshing and more performance optimization. Ooh, server meshing. Yeah. That's uh, when two servers join together to make one server, or uh, you know, hundreds of servers to make one. Yep. And then for our first quarter in 2019, we've got no character stuff, but we're going to have two locations uh, refineries, the creation of mineral. Uh, um, in what refine uh, refinement facilities so somewhere where we can take our mining material and refine it ourselves or sell it to them to be refined and comare revision i wonder if we'll um ever get um uh banister back what's her name um tessa tessa banister yeah what was that what was yeah. that station what um, was that station that we went out to the comare 
Yeah, it was gone right. Uh, they essentially said in I think an ATV or when they were just mostly talking um, that they do they are bringing the herb back, but she's not compatible with the current system. Yeah, right. Eh? Also, that everyone liked to so say much that yeah. Oh, sorry about the long pauses. Cough me guts up off mic. <clears throat> yeah, no, er yeah, everyone was a bit disappointed when she got taken away when we went to 3.0. I was too. I was, I was, I used to get very annoyed with her going to do the missions out there. And you had to, you know, it was always the same old story from her. But once she's not around, you miss her. Good old It's Tessa. truly a love that was not meant to be. <laughs> So game Should we play the honorary music? <laughs> yeah. Liquid gla gas exploration. So discovering and collecting. Um, this, uh, this feature includes all the tech and gameplay work required to allow players to search for all, for identify, to search for, identify, and extract deposits of liquids or gases on a planet as well as on in space. Expanded cargo, so what's this about? Expanded cargo. This feature will increase the sizes and types of cargo containers that the players will use to transport commodities and goods. The current sizes in the single is a single SCU. These crates will uh, cover large sizes and shapes. Well, that's pretty cool because like like when we saw back in the freelance uh not the freelancer, the staff era video a long time back. And they showed all them larger size crates and stuff like that, like big fuel pods and things like that. So we'll be able to like pick up, you know, 5,000 litres of fuel as one big pod to go drop off somewhere. And a couple of SCUs of um, smaller stuff to drop elsewhere. So depending on where you're going to take the goods, if it needs to be separate or if it's all going as a lump lump um, entity, I yeah. guess, to somewhere. So it'll be a bigger crate. I mean, if you want to have the yeah, bigger crate also means more storage capability because it goes up, I think, by 10% or so. Yeah. Because it gets rid of the barriers. Uh, this is one for everyone that owns a Herald out there. The ability to transfer data between locations, but this system also includes the creation of data packets, tags to points of interest in the universe, or oh, pardon me, that allows it to be tracked. For example, a prospector identifies a vein of Nickel, the location of that discovery becomes a piece of data that the prospector can transfer or sell. So you'd pass that information on to someone that owns a Herald so they can get there and sell the information as quickly as possible for someone else. Uh, long range scanning. Actually, this is what I was talking about before Untamed, so it wasn't 3.2 or 3.3 when we were reading about that. This is the bit I was talking about before. The system requires allow a ship to scan wider areas of space, find points of interest and travel to them. This will this will feature heavy heavily with prospecting and exploring ships. So the long range scanning, 3.5. AI entities, um, so increased in combat style, implement combat pers personalities. Uh, work on the features that will include a variety of combat styles that can be applied to NPC AIs. Some of these initial personalities would range from untrained fighters to trained military, allowing a variety of flavors f flavors to an to an encounter. And combat styles, so which will uh, this feature will introduce a variety of combat styles and AI pilots. These personalities would vary in the approach to the combat scenarios in order to make each combat encounter a little more unre uh, unpredictable. This update will also allow AI ships to attack ground targets. So that'd be pretty cool, actually, if you if you're cruising around on Cyclone or a Dragonfly or something down on a moon surface. And you got a bit of a wanted level on you if the AI security in that area can fly in then and start attacking you while you're on the ground. I mean, right now, if you just uh, on Port also, for instance, you have a crime rating of five, the highest you can get. And all you have to do is to avoid security is just go out of the range of the turrets. Yeah. It would be cool if when you land down, you can't actually go into the actual Port also without needing uh, security. Yeah. 
Well, since they've made the changes, the turrets, I've never been shot. Like, when they first implemented them and they were on the top, you used to get mowed down all the time. Now they've made the changes, I've never been attacked. Doesn't matter if I come in from the bottom, the side, the top, wherever I don't get attacked. But if I linger around up in the space of the area for too long, I find the security ships will come in and start shooting at me. Yeah. Uh, ships and vehicles for 3.5. So we're going to have the Origin 890 jump. Yeah. Can't wait to get on that. Troy's got one of them. And the Banu Defender for all you people out there that have got Banu Defenders and been waiting for years for them to show up. They finally will be here. Yeah. Oh. Well Oh, it's not the brand new uh, merchant mint. It's the brand new defender. It's the uh, oh, it smaller. Is too. Uh, yeah, assumption. yeah, yep. Sorry. I mean, I'm. Bad. Yeah. My bad. I'm looking forward. Uh, it's like, well, I was looking into the ships and all that. Like, what ship do I want? Like, I got <coughs> really into the brand new defender. Um, sorry, the brand new merchant mint. It's like, this thing is nice. But then I found out about the Carrick and what it can do. It's like, I want the Carrick more now. Yeah, yeah. So, a couple of submachine guns. Um, yeah, submachine gun. What's this one? Submachine gun, wasn't it? A microwave cannon. Okay. Oh my god, portable hot pan generator. Yeah, we. that's right. We can, no matter where we are, we can always cook our popcorn. So if we get lost, if we get, ever get lost in our cyclone again, we won't go hungry. And so another microwave cannon. Two microwave cannons. Oh no. Oh, hang on, that was this one I never cooked on. Oh, it's ballistic pistol. And for core tech, one entry performance optimization. There we go. So that was the roadmap. 